everyone. In this lecture, we're going to be talking about the two-sample t-test. Now, whenever I refer to the two-sample t-test, I'm specifically referring to the statistical test where the two samples are independent of each other. And this is very useful for when you have experiments where you have a treatment group and you have a control group. And you want to know, are the results of these two groups statistically significant to each other? So you have, let's say, an average here, and you have an average here. And you want to know, are these two averages different from each other? Now, you can't use a one-sample t-test because you have two samples. And so you use a two-sample t-test to determine whether or not these two averages are different from each other. Now, that being said, um, the math behind the two-sample t-test is rather complex. And I'm actually not going to go over it simply because the formulas are just absolutely insane. Most teachers at this point rely on this guy to do the rest of the work for us. And I'm gonna teach you guys how to use the uh, graphing calculator to help you. Now this will only work for the TI-83 and the TI-84. If you don't have one of these, I highly recommend getting one because they're gonna be useful for the rest of this class. Now uh, let's talk about how to conduct a two sample t-test. First off, there is a button that says STAT. If you click on it, you will see the following. You will see three menus. Edit. You'll see Calc. And you'll see Tests. Now, for the rest of this course, we are going to be working with the Edit menu and the Test menu. Calc menu is not very um, useful for us at this point. Uh, so now you can use the left and right arrows, these are the arrows over here, to, move, to change menus. So uh, let's go over to the edit menu. Make sure the edit, um, the, the word edit here at the top is highlighted. And now you're going to click on number one, which should say edit. And you are going to see this. L1, L2. L3, and so on. This is going to be the place where you have where you put in your data for your samples. Now L1 is going to be your sample one, L2 is going to be your sample two. And let's suppose this is the control group and this is the treatment group. I should emphasize that experiments aren't the only use for the two-sample t-test but they're pretty much the only <laughs> use for the two-sample t-test. Um, so let's say we're interested in determining if more sleep um, improves your GPA. And you have, one, uh, you have your control group where um, you just don't ask them to change anything, and you get an, uh, GPAs of 3, 2, 1, 2, 3. And in your treatment group, let's say you have a total of six people. And you have uh, GPAs of 4, 3, 4, 4, 4, 4. Now, the treatment group, you forced all the people to sleep an extra two hours. So whenever they woke up, you would tell them to go back to sleep for two hours. And you want to know, did this make a statistic significance? Um, so you have two samples, and you want to know whether or not these are different from each other. Now, if you already have numbers in your list, you can just hit delete over and over again to delete those numbers from the list. And then you just enter in those numbers. You hit three, enter, two, enter, one, enter, two, enter, three, enter for the first sample. And then you move to the right to go to your second sample. And then I know it's hard to see because you should be relying on this guy over here. Um, and then L2 is four, three, four, 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 four. There we go. So you should have a list one with numbers and list two with numbers. And now we're gonna go back to stats. So you're gonna hit the button that says stat. And you're going to go back to that um, menu where you have edit, calc, and the tests tab. Now we're going to go scroll over to the tests tab. So we are going to see the z-test, t-test, two-sample z-test, which we'll talk about later on. It sucks. That's my hint. Uh, and then the fourth one, it will say four colon two dash SAMP t-test. Uh, and those will be lowercase. 
Let's just be consistent here. You are going to scroll down until you're uh, until you highlight that number four, or you could just hit four. Either way, um, and now you're going to see a bunch of other stuff. So first off, you're going to see input is either data or stats. Leave it on data. Um, list one should say L one. List two should say L two. Now, if it doesn't, if it says something else, then what you can do is you can hit second stat. I'll write it up here. You hit second, and then you hit stat. And that will allow you to pick which list you want to choose. So you, you can put L1 and L2 there. Uh, frequency 1 should be 1. Frequency 2 should be 1 as well. You should be choosing does not equals mu2. Um, as the no hypothesis, or as the hypothesis, I guess, um, the alternative hypothesis, I should say, and for pooled, always, always, always pick no for pooled. The reason is pooled, it takes the standard deviation of both groups and combines them to make a new standard deviation. I don't like this. I don't see why you would ever want to use this. Just don't use it. I guess if you're taking from the same population, I guess you could use pooled. I don't like using pooled, though. Just not my thing. So uh, for that reason, just hit no. Uh, and then if you scroll all the way down, you will see calculate. And you have to hit the down arrow quite a bit. You'll see calculate. And then I'm going to tell you what you see after that. So I see this menu right here. Mu1 does not equal mu2 is the alternative hypothesis. T equals negative 3.98756 and so on. And then P equals 0 0.0084 and so on. And then you got you see some other stuff down below. Now, a couple things to mention. First off, this is your alternative hypothesis. We already know that. Uh, your T value basically determines how far off your um, your results are, how far off the two samples are from each other. And in this case, the further the number is away from, the further the T score is away from zero, the further the differences are between the two samples. And so in this case, the samples are pretty far apart from each other. And the P value will tell you how rare it is to see two samples that far apart from each other. And so we get a p-value of 0 0.0084. Now, typically we choose an alpha value of like 0 0.05 for almost every statistical test. So the question is, is the p-value less than the alpha value? The answer is yes, meaning that these two samples just so happen to be so different from each other, that's so rare to see if they were genuinely the same, that the treatment didn't really do much. Um, it's so rare that it crosses this threshold of, rare to completely different. There is a difference. Something is making a difference. And the only thing that we can point to that difference is the treatment. And so therefore, the treatment causes a change in the GPA. And so that would be the conclusion of this. Anyways, thank you guys so much. In the next lecture, I'm going to go over one more example with you guys so we get a clear understanding of how to use this and, um, and so on. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you then.